I love the way you come up the stairs and the grandeur of the space always comes as a little bit of a surprise, even if you've been in it a hundred times. It has a timelessness to it in its simplicity and its elegance. I remember thinking, how fabulous to be opening this theater. I loved it. Oh, God, I loved it. It has become the theater that everybody wants to dance in. Everybody, all over the world. Live from Lincoln Center Plaza, opening night of the New York State Theater. The New York State Theater was opened in 1964 and much, much later renamed the David Koch Theater. The opening of the New York State Theater at Lincoln Center is a cause for joy and celebration on the part of all New Yorkers. Opening night, 1964, is a big deal. It's a celebration. It's a party. You have major figures in the arts, in government, in the private sector of philanthropy, and they're all coming together. What a thrilling evening. Throughout our state and throughout our nation, they're going to take heart when they see what Philip Johnson has done in translating a concept into one of the most beautiful theaters in the world. There had been talk for a long time about the need for a really good dance theater in New York. The very fact of this building, the vision of its use, remind us that the arts have emerged as a vital force on the American scene. The New York State Theater is seen as one of the components that will help this country take its rightful place on the international cultural stage. The work of the architect is done, the theater is born. Philip Johnson was trying to express in this building something that George Balanchine was trying to express with the New York City Ballet, which is an institution that emerges out of a great classical tradition, but then pushes it forward. The architect, Philip Johnson, would ultimately say, I built it for George. Balanchine was very involved in the building of this theater and was very specific as to size of the stage, the sites of, of every seat, the proportion are perfect for that. The proscenium is 60 feet high, the stage is at least 60 feet long. My first impression was, my God, I have to dance so much bigger. Which is exactly what Balanchine wanted. Where you held back, now you had to let loose. George Balanchine uses pine wood and he weaves it together. It's a kind of woven floor that's particularly buoyant. When they were testing it, they brought in dancers from the ballet to, to you know, jump up and down on it to see if it would work, and indeed it did. We had danced opening night, and I got a message. Balanchine wants you, the minute the last bow is finished, to hurry up to the foyer, right? He's waiting for you. And I come running up, and there was this guy doing an interview. See Jacques D'Amboise, who's just been dancing there. He should come out, too. I just remember being so jejun, like a naive. What did you think about the theater? And I start saying how great it is. It's like getting new shoes. We're present. It's like, uh, you know, having dirty shoes or polished shoes. What a stupid thing to say. Now you see what I was working on for five years, just exactly that. Well, that's what we all want. See, we, we're now so pleased that that Jock is happy and that George is happy. But I think Balanchine didn't want this interview to happen without what it was for, the dance. So much here could be done. I think that, uh, you know, we have to stay very, very long time here to use everything that is, you know, possible. He often talked about how lucky we were to have this home. When you have a jewel like this building, it is your responsibility to upkeep it in its best condition. It's a reminder that we're not afraid at a certain point to dream very big. I hope it has as good a life in the next 50 years as it's had in the last 50. We are luckier than any other dance company in the world because we have the perfect home.